Next year, I want to grow more of these cosmos, in addition to a number of the other flowers that did very well in my garden. And to make that happen, I'm going to use these little balls of earth and seed. Join me today as I discuss how to make and how to use seed bombs. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and in the relatively recent history of seed bombs, they tend to be made most often using wildflower seeds. And that's the basic approach I took with the flower seeds I chose to make my bombs. The idea is quite simple. We take this and we put it in our garden or our landscape, and then let nature decide when the appropriate time is for these plants to grow. Nature dissolves this ball, nature determines when germination happens, and nature decides which of these plants will take over. Later in this video, I'll show you how I'm going to place these within my garden area. But for right now, let's go inside and I'll show you how I made these seed bombs. Farmers have been encasing seeds in clay for thousands of years. It can make for easier sowing, especially with very small seeds. But the idea of seed balls was developed more recently by Masanobu Fukuoka. He's the author of One Straw Revolution, which is a great book and one that you should have in your library. And his idea was to take small balls of clay and then to that add seed and more clay. Have it all wet and then dry into balls of clay and seeds that you could spread in the garden or anywhere that you wanted to grow those seeds. The idea was further developed in the 1970s with a group called the Green Gorillas who took these seed balls and turned them into seed bombs as they would throw them in vacant lots in New York to get more plants to grow. Well, whether you call them seed balls or seed bombs, it has developed even further to what we use today as home gardeners, a mix of clay and compost and the seeds of our choice to make an easy method of a group of seeds in an area that we might not normally seed and expect to see a lot of plants to grow. Seed balls as a self-contained package of seeds and earth are ideally suited for gardening with wildflowers. And that's what I'll be making today, is wildflower seed balls or wildflower seed bombs. And in the past, when I made my seed balls, I would buy potting clay, bags of powdered clay that I'd add water to and make my balls. But that's actually pretty expensive stuff. And since then, I found out that most kitty litters well, the main ingredient is nothing but clay. So, I bought a cheap bag of kitty litter, and I have some compost, and I'll be making my own seed balls. Now, I'm going to be making this with my own saved wildflower seeds. So, cheap kitty litter, compost you make yourself, and the seeds you save yourself mean you can do this for next to nothing. But even if you spend some money on buying some seeds that are specifically focused on your garden setting and the wildflowers you want to grow, you can still make a pretty efficient delivery system of seeds for very little cost. I'll start by pouring some of the kitty litter clay particles into a mixing container and then adding the same amount of compost. I'll just mix it up to combine, though that's not critical at this step. And then I'll pour some water and allow it to soak in because all this little kitty litter clay is going to have to break down and combine with the compost. So add some water and then we'll just let it sit for a little bit. The clay helps hold everything together and the compost helps add a little bit of nutrition after the seeds sprout because the idea is a self-contained ball. We're going to put this in our garden and then just walk away from it and let the weather and the elements dissolve the ball. And then the clay and the compost and the seeds 
we'll have a nice little home for germination and initial growth. And so now I'm going to focus on the seeds. Now, these are seeds that I saved, and I'll put a link at the end of this video to how I saved these seeds. I know these flowers do well in my garden, and I want to spread those same flowers into other areas. So now I'm going to take the seeds that I know will work well for me and mix them together. So I have some calendula seeds. Here's some yarrow seeds. And I'm not worried about the specific ratio at this point. Here's some poppy seeds. I have some butterfly weed, some cosmos, and some purple coneflower. Now, if you haven't saved your own seeds, you can easily buy a wildflower mix and do the same thing. And you may notice a lot of these same seeds are in the mix that you might buy. These are very common garden seeds. So now I'm just going to mix it up a little bit. It's not important. I'll also be making some seed balls with some new plants that I want to try out in the garden. So I have some Indian paintbrush and poppy mallow. I've got a showy beard tongue penstemon, some blue stem grass. The idea is whatever plants you might want in your garden, go ahead and make a seed ball with those seeds and then just see what happens. As I discovered with these seeds, I found flowers that I knew would grow. And some of these actually started last year in a wildflower mix that I spread. This year, I'm trying to be a little more specific to get the plants that I want rather than buy a mix that someone else offers, but that's definitely a possibility. So with these seeds in this plate, blended up pretty well, I'm ready to start making some seed balls, and I think the blend is probably about ready to go. There are a couple ways we could do this. We can take some of the material, enough to make about a one inch ball, take some of our seeds, and mix the seeds with the seed ball, squeeze out some of the excess water, and then just put the seed ball aside to dry. The other option that I like doing is to do the seed ball about the same size. And now we can take our plate of seeds and just roll the ball so that the seeds cover the surface. And then the same idea, squeeze out extra water if we can and set the ball aside to dry. Now you probably notice that your hands are going to get pretty dirty doing this. So it's okay to use disposable gloves. And another method of incorporating the seed is to take your seed mix and go ahead and blend it directly to the compost and the clay. Mix it all together and then make your balls. You'll have the seeds incorporated throughout. Now, I prefer the rolling method where I take a formed ball roll it into the seed mix and then set it aside to dry because of these type of seeds. Many wildflower seeds, many perennial seeds actually require light to germinate, sunlight, or a very light covering of soil. So if I've taken these seeds and mixed them into the ball, well, there may be too much of the clay and the compost for these seeds to germinate. So I want them at or very close to the surface of the ball. That's why I'm rolling these seeds in particular. But you can do this same process with vegetable seeds. And so a pea seed or a bean seed that might normally be buried pretty deeply, go ahead and mix it into the clay and the compost and don't worry about the germination because even if it's at the very center of the ball, it's going to be fine. But for me and my wildflower seeds, I'll do the roll method. And that's all there is to it. When we're done, we just go ahead and 
pull our gloves off and the cleanup is simple. So now I'm going to go ahead and wait for these balls to dry and I'll show you the next part of this wonderful process. It's early autumn in my garden. We've already had some freezing temperatures at night. The flowers are fading and I think it's the ideal time to sow wildflower seeds. And so I'm putting these seed bombs in place in this landscape because of what's going to happen over the course of the next few months. Many perennial seeds, many wildflower seeds require cold stratification. That means the seed has to be exposed to very cold temperatures before it will germinate. If I sow these in the spring, I'll probably have some pretty low germination rates, but by doing it in autumn, I give time for the seeds to be exposed to those cold temperatures, for the ball to begin to break down and cover those seeds in a light layer of soil, and come springtime, they're going to germinate at a better rate than if I do it at any other time of year. And so in random areas of my garden, I'll just pull aside the mulch a little bit, drop a seed ball, and put a little bit of mulch around it. These zinnias did really good in this area. Well, I'm hoping in the next season, these seed balls will give me some more variation. And right now, I'm just spacing these seed balls about a foot apart. It's not critical at this point, the spacing. I just want to get some of these seeds exposed to the weather so they can germinate in the spring. The method that the green gorillas used in the 70s was to actually throw the bombs and wherever they landed is where they were allowed to germinate. It's the clay in the recipe that holds these balls together so that they can handle a throw or a drop. And this method works best for variety, for that randomness of plants. If you want very specific plants in your garden in a very specific area, you can do the same thing, but instead of mixing the seeds, just make these balls with one type of seed. I like the idea of the randomness, and I really don't know which of these seeds will germinate best, which is why I've made a mix and why I've spread these balls throughout my garden. I'm willing to wait and see what happens. Now, if I get a lot of these seeds germinating where the ball rests, I may have to thin them out or I could try to dig them out and transplant in another area. I'm not worried about that. I figure nature is going to allow these balls to break down and germinate. So I'll let nature decide which of these plants are going to be the ones that end up spreading throughout this area. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.